So I've been wanting to make this video for a while and have been kind of thinking about how I want to present it. And what I want to talk about today is how to choose the realtor that's the right fit for you. And yes, of course, I am a realtor, but I want to present some scenarios where I might not be the right person for you to work with. And of course, you might even be questioning like, hey, it's 2022, like, do I even need a realtor? Like, isn't there an app for this? Isn't there some way that I can do this myself? Can't I just watch YouTube videos and figure it out? And all of those questions kind of have the answer yes. And all of them have very different solutions of how you would solve that problem. But there are solutions out there. I do feel like it's up to me. It's up to people in my industry to change the cliches associated with what it means to be a realtor or a real estate agent. And what is the difference between those two? It's actually just belonging to this one little group that you pay dues to, to be a realtor. So the distinction doesn't matter too much. Some people might think that realtors are similar to used car salespeople. They're just trying to sell you something. They're trying to sell you something used. Most houses are pre-existing. So since I've been in this position about two years now, I've spent a lot of that time asking the question, how can I do this differently than it was presented to me? And maybe that's because I'm in my 30s, which I'm still considering young, even though like suddenly my neck hurts randomly after holding my kids in, in some weird position. But since I am young still, I'm questioning all the time, can I do this differently? Can I do this differently than my dad would think of it? Or can I do this differently than I perceived it as I was growing up? And I do it differently in a lot of ways. Here I am making YouTube videos. I'm wearing a t-shirt. This is typically what I wear when I meet with clients. I mean, I am in Florida, it's hot here, so I'm not, that's not too uncommon to dress pretty casually. But I started questioning how many of these things can I do differently and how many of them are worth doing differently. Maybe there's some ways the things have been done that are still good and worth preserving. Some of this thought process hit me a little harder when I started trying to help my brother-in-law and his family find a house. So for a long time, they were living in Manhattan as what you would call dinks, dual income, no kids, which is a very unique position to be in, to have two well, good paying jobs, to be able to live in a big city. That's a really unique experience. Then they had their daughter, who's just a couple of months younger than my daughter. And that changed some things, obviously. Then skip ahead about two years and they had a second kid on the way. They decided to move down here to Florida and we kind of moved to this area at the same time. They wanted to be closer to family. Their city was kind of shut down in the midst of the pandemic. They moved here kind of as a safe haven for a little bit and then decided to make the move permanently. And then at that time, my brother-in-law referred to himself as a Henry, high earner, not rich yet. So even though he had this great job still in Manhattan, able to do it remotely, when it came to the process of buying a house or the benefits or downsides of owning a house, he was clueless. And sometimes I do think using a realtor is kind of like using a mechanic. Like there's a lot of things on your car that you can fix yourself. And there's another layer of issues with your car where you could watch a video or call somebody and figure it out with a little bit of help then there are other times you need a mechanic. The reason I think we go to people like mechanics isn't because we hate working on cars, it's because we need someone to solve a problem for us. And they solve it so much faster than we could. It takes less time, less money, less of everything for them to solve the problem. And that is what a realtor does. Because we are reading these contracts all the time, because we're making offers, and missing on houses and making offers and getting accepted and negotiating inspections and doing all of this process. We're talking to lenders and title companies and appraisers. We're doing all of this very, very often. It becomes second nature for us. We can solve a lot of these problems very, very quickly with one simple conversation. And we're not having to ask questions to understand all the backstory. But we all know those mechanics who when you go in and take your car and then they call you and tell you what's wrong with it, there are some of those that give you the big list that kind of make you feel like it's your fault that your car's having a problem. 
or maybe that's the dentist that I'm thinking about. But there are those mechanics that kind of talk down in the midst of that process. They talk down to you as the customer. And this is where realtors have to set themselves apart. It's still our job to keep our clients extremely informed and comfortable and financially protected in the midst of these big transactions. But sometimes it's even hard to think of it as a big transaction because I've bought and sold houses and I do it for other people all the time. So I think of it as a pretty easy process. I mean, I also like buy and sell shoes and it doesn't seem that different to me. Of course, there's more paperwork, there's more, there's banks involved and lawyers at times and all these kind of things but it's still a pretty simple process. Really quickly, let's talk about new construction because these builders do try to draw you in and tell you you don't need an agent. And reality is you don't, you don't need an agent at all. But let's think about why they don't want you to have an agent. So a typical commission for a realtor is about 3%, sometimes a little bit less. So I have a new construction deal closing next week and they are paying me a 3% commission. If the builder was not paying me that 3%, the price does not come down for my clients. So that's more profit for the builder. Of course, the builder wants to make more profit. Even that person in the office for the builder is incentivized to make the company more money. They likely get a percentage of that that doesn't get paid out to a realtor. But if you're really savvy, you could probably do it on your own. And then you could even ask the builder like, hey, can you give me a 3% discount because I'm not using a realtor? maybe they would even be willing to do that. So let's look at the life of the loan. How much money does that save you? So for a $400,000 house, your monthly payment would be about $1,500 a month. So if they lowered the price to 388, so that's minus that 3% of 12,000, your payment would go down about $50 a month. Then if you add those payments up for 30 years, that is a difference of about $18,000. But that is over 30 years, and there would be a little bit of a difference in your cash out of pocket. It'd be about $2,400 less of your down payment that you would have to give if they did give you that discount that lowered the price. So that's actually a savings of a little over $20,000 over 30 years, which is not bad at all, not bad at all. By doing that process on your own, you give up an advocate on your side. And these builders, I mean, they're not, used car swindlers. They're not like that. I, I, I definitely wouldn't paint it that way, but they are trying to sell you something. They're not representing the transaction. They're not representing your best interest. They're not even taking the time to probably understand what your best interests are. So then how do you find the realtor that could go into any of those situations and represent you and your interests in the way that you most desire? Of course, I think YouTube is a great way to find this person for you. And the reason I think it's so good is because you get to hear a lot from a person. You get to know me or, or another agent pretty well before you actually reach out. And there are a lot of people or teams that could be a really good fit for you. And there's probably five that could be a good fit for you. And they're all probably pretty similar to each other. And, and maybe this fit isn't even that big of a deal. Maybe you don't even care. Maybe you just want somebody to find the best deal, negotiate the hardest, do exactly what you say, and move on. If that's what you want, I'm probably not the right fit for you because we like to do things a little bit differently. So I have one other agent that works with me right now and we talk every day about being very client focused, about being able to work for clients instead of work for ourselves. And the reason that we care about this is because it just feels better. And yeah, maybe that's kind of um, idealistic, but why not be idealistic when you can? We like this approach because we actually feel more relationally connected to our clients in the midst of the transaction. It's not so sterile. We're thinking, what are their best interests? Do I need to convince, like try to get them to walk away? Do I need to try to get them to rent for now? Whatever it is, when we, when we get to have this approach, we feel very good in those interactions. So really quickly, what kind of client is probably not a good fit for me and Ben right now in March, 2022? If you expect us to dress up, we're probably not the right fit for you. If you are always complaining about you wish they would have done it like like, like they used to back in the day, we're probably not the right fit for you. One time I was showing a condo to 
a client's grandfather. So the client was the grandson. His mom had contacted me and then her dad had come down from a different town to see this property for all of them. And I met them there, it was really short notice and made it work, but I didn't have a printout. And he complained that I didn't have a printout and he's like, where is it? And I said, oh, I, I didn't bring that. I, you know, this was really short notice, just had to make it work. And he like shook his head and he said, I, I miss the way realtors used to work and just walked away. I was like, oh, okay, it's probably not a good fit. And it wasn't, they moved on and found a different agent, that's fine. Another kind of client that wouldn't be a good fit for us is someone that thinks we have all the answers. We are more than willing to admit that we don't know things at times and we are willing to go seek out the answer. But if you expect us to know the flood zone map, we don't know it, we don't have it memorized. It's not that simple, but we are willing to find all those answers for you and support you in the process. The way that I like to define our approach here at the Living in Tampa team is as problem solving consultants. The reason I like to define it this way is because we get paid if we solve the problem. Anyone that solves the problem of finding you the house at the right time at the right price gets paid. That's what it takes to deserve a commission in this business. And if we're not able to solve your problem, we don't deserve that. So it's one reason I don't have people sign buyer broker agreements or anything like that. I don't like that. And I don't want to think of our job as just a salesperson because having that approach, then we're always just trying to sell. We're, you're coming to us, you're saying, I want to be under contract on a house. So our objective is to get you under contract on the house that fits your criteria. Our job is not to sell you something. I know this, Video ended up being a little bit rambly, but I wanted you all to just know some of my perspective of the real estate industry, how we like to approach working with our clients and how we are building this business. If you do want to reach out and talk about business, talk about the weather, or find a house here in the Tampa area, we would love to connect with you. Our phone number and email are right there on the screen. We are reachable all the time. We are most reachable through email and text. If you call and leave a voicemail, we will get back to you, but sometimes it takes a couple days. Again, thanks for coming by.